Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at that ongoing Arctic blast. It's a massive cooldown we have going on for the United States. We're going to talk all about that and also when we can possibly expect this one to come to an end and eventually see the warm temperatures return. Anyways, for today's comment of the day, I want to know when do you think this cooldown will come to an end and we will see a warm up? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video. So first things first, we're taking a look at the temperature anomalies. Most of this video, we will be taking a look at this. We're going to talk a little bit about some severe weather coming up at the very, very end of this video. So stay tuned for all of that. Uh, we're also going to take a look at when this could possibly come to an end as well. So first things first, we're taking a look at this morning from the time I'm making this video. Uh, so near the east coast, as you can see, we're near normal, very bright blues and very bright yellows indicating one or two degrees away from your normal temperatures. This is a very typical uh, April 20th morning we're dealing with here along the east coast. As you move further west, that is not the case so much because in those greens, we're looking at about 10 to 15 degrees below normal. And in those blues within the greens, we're taking a look at about 15 to 30 degrees below normal. And even for the Rockies, we have some magentas, which is 30 degrees or more below normal so very very frigid as you reach areas very close to the rockies there let's just take this towards about 2 a.m here on wednesday april 21st and as you can see this gets way more potent by the time we're reaching this point the east coast you're still dealing with some very decent temperatures uh, but as again as you head further west towards the ohio valley the great plains areas like that we're dealing with temperatures widespread that are 15 to 30 degrees below normal and and the magentas there from Missouri, Arkansas, Oklahoma, 30 degrees or more below normal. I hope I don't have to explain why this is a major Arctic blast uh, to some of you. Uh, this is a very, very significant cooldown here. Uh, one that for this time of year is very rare. Um, this is a more March or February type cooldown that we're going to be dealing with here. Let's just take a look at those actual temperatures at 2 a.m. As you can see, we have widespread 30s there for Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Tennessee, Mississippi, Kentucky, I hope this explains, obviously, why this is quite rare. Uh, and then mid to lower 20s there for Missouri, portions of Arkansas, portions of Oklahoma, Illinois, Indiana, uh, and anywhere further north than that, obviously, as well. So very, very frigid conditions we're going to be dealing with here uh, as we're heading into a couple of days from now. Let's just move towards 2 a.m. on the 22nd. And as you can see, finally, the East Coast, you're dealing with this cooldown now. Uh, so enjoy the warm weather while it's here because it is going to get much cooler uh, as we approach the weekend. Uh, as you can see, those blues that are 15 to 30 degrees below normal are very close to the East Coast by this point and the Gulf Coast. Here's what those low temperatures on Thursday, very, very early morning, will look like. Widespread 30s even through the Southeast and the Deep South, uh, but especially there as you head towards the Northeast, we have widespread 20s. Uh, same story for the Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes as well. So very, very frigid pattern we have coming up here for this region. All right, now what we're going to do here is we're going to move on, and we're going to move on towards uh, later on Thursday, and we're just going to keep moving on through the weekend where we're going to see when this cooldown will eventually come to an end. All right, now here we are taking a look at about 8 p.m. here on Thursday. Again, still, that's going to be on April 22nd, and as you can see, we still have these greens very widespread throughout all of these eastern regions throughout the United States. But again, still, the central United States is the coolest here. Let's just move towards about 2 p.m. here on Friday, April 23rd. And as you can see for the plains of the Ohio Valley and portions of the Gulf states, we're again dealing with about 10 to 15 degrees below normal. And in some of those blue shades, 15 to 30 degrees below normal as well. Uh, so we have a pretty potent uh, cold air mass still in place. Same story by the time we reach about 2 p.m. here on Saturday, April 24th. Again, the greens and the blues are all over the place. The northeast is warming up quite a bit here, actually, uh, but still dealing with mostly... Uh, some colder than normal conditions for the eastern half of the United States here by this point. Now, by the time we reach about 2 p.m. here on Sunday, uh, we see something interesting occur. This cooldown becomes a little bit less potent. We do see some warmer air enter in for uh, some of the four corner states there and even beyond, even further north and further east than that. Notice that the west coast is cooling down. Uh, that's something that's happened over the past couple of frames here that we've taken a look at. That is a negative PNA, and typically this will encourage some warmer air to enter in to areas further east in the west coast. And as you can see, by the time we push towards about 2 p.m. on Monday, April 26, you just see these warmer temperatures really enter in through uh, the Gulf states into portions of the plains here and even portions of the eastern United States. So that is a result of that negative PNA. I, I love when we can just see this teleconnection taking place on the map here and just identify that and then see exactly what happens afterwards. Very validating to see that occur, obviously. 
Now, by the time we're taking a look at about 2 p.m. here on Tuesday, April 27th, you can tell that that warm-up has really entered into the eastern United States uh, here by this point. The west half of the United States, I would say, is very cold by this point. The Four Corner States, the west coast, the, the Rocky Mountains, even the northern plains there, the upper Midwest, all dealing with some below normal temperatures. So this is a clear-cut pattern of trough in the west, ridge in the east, uh, which, again, is going to allow for that very nice warm pattern in the eastern United States here by this point. Let's take this towards about 2 p.m. on Wednesday and something interesting begins to occur. And I don't think a lot of people are going to like this. This warm-up is still here for the eastern United States, but we see a massive trough entering in through the central United States. Uh, so that's quite interesting. That cool down on the west coast of the United States is becoming a little less potent. And by the time we reach about 2 p.m. here on Thursday, take a look at that. A positive PNA is trying to fight its way back in through California, Nevada there as well. And that would encourage some colder temperatures to enter in further east than that. And as you can see, for the upper Midwest, the Plains, the Ohio Valley, that is becoming true here by this point. We do see that the east coast there is dealing with some very warm temperatures. Uh, but I don't expect that to last very long uh, at all here based on what we're seeing. So what we're going to do here is we're going to move on. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and take a look at this in five-day increments here from our GFS Ensemble model. We're also going to take a look at what the Climate Prediction Center has to say. And then we're going to take a little bit of a look at that a severe weather threat that's coming up as well. All right, so here we are taking a look at this in five-day increments, and this is crucial because we get to get a, a bigger picture of the pattern here. So first things first, we're taking a look at the 20th through the 25th, which is today through Sunday, April 25th. And as you can see, uh, the trend is very clear. We're going to have a warm, positive PNA there on the West Coast, and that is going to allow for some very cold air to enter in through the central and the eastern United States. Uh, the further west you go towards the Rockies, the more potent that cold air will be. Also, the Ohio Valley gets a little bit of an extension of those brighter greens, which again is that more potent cold air. But near the east coast, we're going to be a little bit more normalized there, uh, taking a look at mostly 5 to maybe 7 degrees below normal for a 5-day period, which is pretty potent, but not nearly as potent as those greens, which is 10 to 15 degrees below normal. So that's a lot more significant, obviously. Uh, and by the time we take a look at the pattern here for the 25th through the 30th, you can tell this is a lot less potent. And really, this isn't a clear-cut pattern at all. We do have some warmer air entering in uh, through the central United States and the eastern United States with a little bit of colder air there near Montana, North Dakota, Minnesota, and the West Coast. But this does not mean that every single day within this five-day period, the 25th through the 30th, will look this way. But overall, all five of them together, uh, when you take the mean average of that, that will look like this, according to this model. And then the five-day period after that, which is basically the final day there of April April 30th through May 5th. Uh, as you can see, we get a little bit of some colder air to enter into the eastern United States again with some warmer air along the east coast. Uh, and then obviously a positive PNA there in the west coast of the United States. Pacific North American Oscillation, by the way, guys. I forget to mention that. Uh, it's a really important oscillation. If you want to learn more about weather, I'd highly recommend that you uh, do some research on that. It's one of the more simple ones to understand. Uh, so it's pretty easy, um, and it's really, really a crucial player in our patterns that we see here. Now, this is going to allow for some severe weather, I think, this pattern. We're going to find ourselves in eventually, especially there from the 25th through the 30th. Let's take a look at the 6 to 10-day outlook here from NOAA, uh, and this is going to be the 25th through the 29th. And as you can see, some warmer air there for the south-central United States and mostly colder there for the west coast and the north-central United States. And then for the 8 to 14 day outlook here, uh, we see some colder air there for the upper Midwest and then some warmer air for the East Coast and the South Central United States. This is going to be the 27th through the 3rd there. Uh, let's just take a look at that little bit of a severe weather threat we find ourselves uh, seeing. So this is going to be for basically Friday in through the night into a little bit of Saturday morning. So mostly just Friday. Uh, and we do have a 15% chance of severe weather uh, there for Texas, Oklahoma, Louisiana, and Mississippi. This will translate to a slight risk likely for these yellow regions at least. So I see an enhanced risk at least being likely somewhere within here. So we are going to have a little bit of an elevated severe weather threat there on Friday. And then here Saturday, you can see the day after this actually just moves a little bit further eastward. Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Florida, seeing some of that severe weather this day as well. Anyway, for our confidence tab today, we are at a 6 out of 6. It's been a long time since we've seen this, but since we're just taking a look at a temperature pattern 
and some severe weather potentially that's coming up in the shorter range. Uh, we feel very confident in what we're talking about in this video, so I feel very good about all the things we've talked about today. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, do you think this will be the last major snowstorm we see all, all year? And James Marr said, I believe this will be the final major snowstorm of this season. Can't wait for another great winter of 2021 to 2022. It's been a long ride, guys, but I do agree, unfortunately. I think this will be our last major snowstorm. I love making the videos about snowstorms. Uh, they're my favorite type of video to make, so it's very unfortunate to see the winter coming to a close. Obviously, I'm ready for spring and ready for summer, so there is some excitement there, uh, but it's always sad to see it go, and I can't wait for next winter here with you guys. I'm very excited. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, Property Damage, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Alan Palomo, Adam S., Larry LePan, Donna Carnes, Cameron Marshall, and Aiden Mattis. Alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Alan Cherry, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Michael Buell, Cat Bite, Charles Stinnett, Kellen Manhart, It's Jay, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Fulegos, Garys, and John Quilisi. If you would like to be a part of this patron entry of the day, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. Now, also for our channel member highlight of the day, I want to thank our weather top dog, Hair Farms 1, and then also our super fan, Phoenix Nimitz. If you would like to support the channel this way, you can do so by clicking that button next to the subscribe button and checking it out today. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button, guys. Be sure to comment to help the YouTube algorithm out, and be sure to subscribe if you like weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.